and I'm a member of the Lincoln County 4-H Livestock Club and a member of the Lincoln County FFA chapter. Today, I will be showing you a little bit about what we do here on our Sequoia Dairy Farm. This is Becca. Becca has been one of my show cows that I've used for 4-H and FFA for seven years. Becca is a cow that I trust very much and I will be showing all of my processes on her today. Now, on a dairy farm, there is about six different breeds of dairy cattle. Our farm only has about two of those different breeds, but some other farms do well in other breeds. The names are Holstein, which is the most common, Jersey, Guernsey, Ayrshire, Brown Swiss, and Milky Shorthorn. Our cows, we have a majority of Holsteins, but we do have a little bit of Jerseys. We have about maybe six Jerseys and the rest of our 70 cows are Holstein, which consists of about 76 milking cattle, which is not including our cattle on our other facilities that are not ready to be milked yet. Our cows milk two times a day within 12 hour milking periods. They milk about 80 pounds a day and drink about 40 gallons of water a day. But when it is hot and in the summer days, they will drink up to 100 gallons of water a day. Let's talk about our feet. Our feed is a mixture of TMR. TMR stands for total mixed ration. That just means that it's a combination of many different feeds. Our combinations include hay, corn silage, mineral, corns, and soybeans. Our cows need this to be able to produce milk. Just as humans produce energy by eating, our cows need their silage and their mixtures and their water. Let's talk about some of our milky processes. We are not in the milking parlor at this time. We cannot show everything there is to milk, but I will show you our processes before the milker comes on and after it comes off. For any milking, we use our protective gloves. These nylon gloves protect the cow from getting bacteria in their udder and also protect us humans from getting any kind of bacteria or dirt on our hands that would infect another cat. So, these, this is our milking process. At the time, it is not milking time, and we still have a few hours before milking. So I don't want to mess up our cow in any way in her production cycle. But I will show you the products. So when the cows first enter our milking facilities, the first thing that is applied to their teeth is this. This is called a pre-dip. It's kind of like a shampoo for humans, but it's for cows. After this is applied, we use our cotton wipes to wipe off the teeth. This just keeps the Clorox and the bleach products from entering the milking system. After we wiped it off, we use this strip cup. As you can see, the strip cup has many holes. This is used for a purpose. You strip, to use the strip cup, the milk, you use the teats, you strip every four teats, about two or three times. And if there's any chunky milk or anything that looks unnatural or maybe some dirt, then you can treat the cow for that specific disease or bacteria process that they have. So, but if the cow does come out clean milk and there's no bacteria or substance that ends up in the strip cup, then you apply the milker. The milker comes on for about five minutes. So when the milker is taken off and the cow has completed their milking process, this is applied. This is an iodine substance. Now iodine is just a protectant. It goes through the teeth until they're ready for the next milking and it stays on. This is a very important substance because it protects the manure and the feed and everything that they live through daily to protect it from getting into the teeth and giving infection. Now, let's talk about our halters. Halters are very important when it comes to dairy cattle. Milking, milking and ensuring any kind of damage should be done. We also use our leather halters for showing. This, of course, we don't use daily on a dairy farm because it's used for the showing ring, but it also helps with control. Let's talk about some of the brushes. This brush has little spikes on the end that's used for getting the hard to reach dirt out of the way. This can be used for tail grooming to get the clumps of manure out of the tail, or it can be used to get some of the hard, stubborn little pieces that come off. As you can see, it also helps shed the coat the other brush that we will use is a soft bristle brush. 
This just helps to get the loose hair out of the way, some of the manure, and it helps before they go milking so that the hair and the feed that sometimes gets stuck on them will not come onto the humans. Now, lastly, I'm gonna talk about a couple of our products that we use. Just as cow needs medicine, it's also important for them to be identified. As you can see, our showing cows have a different kind of tag in their ear. But some of the other ones just have their number, their sire, and their date of birth. These help for the breeding charts, your growing charts, and keeping track of all their processes and their growth cycles that they go through. It's kind of like just getting ear pierced. It doesn't really hurt them. Next, we'll talk about a ball organ. Now, cows are not humans, so they cannot swallow their own pills. So we have to help them. If a cow needs aspirin or some other kind of medicine, you will put it in the center of this gun, push it down their throat a little bit, and push the lever in, and that's how they get their medicine. This is phosphate. This is very useful in the barn because cows, like as you can see, she's kicking her tail, kicking her feet. Flies are not a cow's best friend. So you can use this spray. Keep the flies off, and you can see as they're leaving her body. That is very useful for showing days and for regular milking days. All right, everyone, I hope you enjoyed this video and thank you for coming with me to my farm. Hello, my name is Jordan and today I'm gonna to be talking to you all about things we get from beef cattle. These are my Hereford cows. Um, starting with an obvious thing that we get from cattle, beef, um, burgers, steak, that stuff, but, and then, um, jello, gelatin, jello, gelatin, dog treats, get all that from their bones and their hooks, and then, from their hive, we get paint and clothes. But also we get paint from the fat. From the fat we also get medicines, deodorant, lotion, shampoo, and all that. And then um, also fertilizer manure is also from cattle. I am Nicholas and this is Tuggy. Today we'll be teaching you about how to um, groom a horse. First, you take your curry comb, which is a round um, rubber comb with little rubber spikes on it. You, ru you rub on your horse in circular movements all around to get the dirt off of their skin and hair. So once you've done that, you take your hard comb and you brush off all the dirt and hair. Once you've done that, you use your soft comb to get the rest of the hair and dirt off. Quick strokes. This comb is also used for brushing their face. So once you've brushed their face, you move on to the tail, which is what this comb is for. So you just 
brush. Then, you can move on to picking your feet. You want to make sure you get out all the dirt. Once you've done that, you can move on to the other feet. So this is how you groom a horse. Hi, my name is Chloe Clarkson and today I'm here with my dwarf photo and I'm going to demonstrate how to groom a rabbit. First, we start with this brush. We just gently brush his top coat to get all the excess hair and dirt off. You just want to be gentle and brush his sides. Just get all the fur that he's shedding off of him. And I usually use show sheen but the bottle's broken. What does Shoshin do, Chloe? Shoshin just helps to get his coat nice and soft and just kind of gives it a shine. And now we're gonna use this brush and this is just for his head and cheeks. Just to get the dirt off and just smooth out the fur. Now, I'm going to turn him over, and we're going to use this brush again for his stomach. This is just a gentle, soft brush that I always use for the belly because it's a sensitive part. Again, I'm just brushing off all of the dirt and excess fur. This brush can even be used to brush his tail. Now that that's done, we're going to get our nail trimmers and trim his nails. We want to be sure not to cut too deep or else you can make the rabbit's nail bleed and hurt the rabbit. If you accidentally do this, then you can just soak its paw in some peroxide or vinegar. The front paws have four toenails and then a dew claw, but the back paw only has four toenails and no dew claw. So now I want to move to the back seat. This is just to make sure that they don't overgrow and get broken in the cage and hurt the rabbit. Now I just want to turn him back over and brush his fur again. I want to pose my rabbit. This teaches him to sit still on the show table when he's being shown and it's just good to teach them this. And what's unique about show rabbits is they each get their own tattoo. His is M.E. but it's wearing off a little bit. Sometimes you have to renew the tattoos. And dwarf photos have an eye band. It comes in three different colors. This is black. There's also chocolate and blue. It's that little ring of fur around the eye. The dwarf photo is a compact breed. And this is a buck. His name is Mercury. Male rabbits are called bucks and female rabbits are called does. You can also give your rabbits treats. I like to give mine strawberries or carrots. He likes carrots. He might not be very hungry right now. I just gave him breakfast. Thank you for watching. Hi, we're the Stoltmans. I'm Heather, this is Anna and Owen. 
We have a farm here in Stanford, and one of the things that we have on our farm is a lot of dairy goats. Uh, we use the milk to, uh, to drink as fluid milk, but we also make cheese and soap with their milk. Um, I'm going to let Anna talk to you about the different breeds that we have here. Now, these are all dairy goats. So, this right here is a Nigerian dwarf. Her name is Odiza. So, the dwarfs can only be a certain height. So this, she is full grown, she's as big as she's gonna get. This is Talea, she's a Toggenberg. So Toggenbergs have straight noses and erect ears, so they stand up. They also have a unique marking of white on chocolate, and all Toggenbergs have to have the exact same marking. This is Ocarina, she's a Sonnen. The Sonnens have straight noses and erect ears, so they stand up. The Sonnens have to be white or a very light cream. So this is Guy, she's the Nubian. One of the two unique things about the Nubians is their Roman noses, so they're curved, their long floppy ears, and they can come in a variety of colors. Alright, so these are dairy goats, so let's go ahead and talk about the milk. So I've heard a lot of people over the years complain about goat milk tasting different or bad compared to cow's milk. And it's not so much of that it's goat's milk, it's more of the environment and what goes into the goats. So, ways that it can taste bad are the environment, their housing is dirty, um, maybe they ate something out in the field like wild onions, because that will give it an off flavor as well. Or it could be the way it was handled, it wasn't cooled quick enough, that can also add to the taste. Alright, so this is the process of milking. So I put them on the stand, and then what I do is I take a sanitizing wipe, and I go ahead and wipe down their teats around the other where I'm gonna, where the milk actually comes out, and then I'll wipe my hands off. And then once I get it in the bucket, I'll, what I'll do is once I finish up, I'll get that to the fridge to cool off as quick as possible. Yeah. One of the most fun things is to play with babies. So. When they're first born, we feed them four times a day. Then, when they get a little bit older, we bump them down to three, and then twice a day. When they turn four months old, we wean them off of milk. So Anna, how do you tell these babies apart? These brown ones all look alike to me. Well, they have this. This is Tiffany, Tula, Penelope, Ruby, Samson, Quinn, Valentino, and Bella. <laughs> This is Holly, Quinn, Tula, Sophie, Ruby. One of the most fun things is playing with a baby. Hi, my name is Heather Stoltman, and this is my daughter Anna and my son Owen. We're going to talk to you about alpacas today. They look like they've been drowned, but they haven't. They just were in the pouring rain for a while. Okay, so when you're considering whether or not you want animals or whether or not you would like alpacas, alpacas are a really low impact animal on your pastures or your fields because of the shape of their hoof. They have a padded hoof and they don't uh, dig in and make um, big tracks like you would think of cows and horses making when the land is kind of wet. And they don't require a lot of feed. Um, actually, we just give ours hay and very little grain. The only time that they get any kind of a grain is when the moms are uh, pregnant or nursing babies. So they're just a really fun pet to have. Alpacas are part of the camelid family. There are five in the camelid family, but the most common three are alpacas, llamas, and camels. So a lot of people confuse llamas with alpacas, so let's talk about a couple differences. The alpacas have more of a pear-shaped ear, and they're shorter. Llamas have more like a banana-shaped ear, and they're much longer. Alpacas are also half the size of llamas. Llamas are good for pack animals and meat. Alpacas, their common purpose is fiber and meat. We have four alpacas. Three females and one male. This is our male sirloin. This is jasmine, soot, and ember. So what we use the alpacas for are fiber. It used to be that only the royalty could have things made of alpaca fiber because it's so soft, water wicking, so it pulls the water away from your body, 
and it's fire resistant. So it's very common here in America to find hats, mittens, scarves, and socks because the alpaca fiber is so soft. So some fun facts about alpacas is when you turn them out in the field, they'll all pick one or two spots and they'll all use that spot to go poop. So it makes it really easy to clean up the field after you let them in there for a while. And some other fun facts are they, their noises that they make, it's kind of like a humming sound, kind of like a soft hum. And you can tell when they're angry because it'll get a little bit higher and a little bit louder. Also, they'll put their ears back and that'll help to let you know that they're not happy. So alpacas typically will spit only at each other, whereas the llamas will be more prone to spit at people. One of the things we have on our farm are sheep. My children show their sheep and we also raise them so that we can use their wool to make things with and we also use them for meat. Now the particular breed that we have are Border Lusters. Brianna, you want to talk about the colors? Yes. So Border Lusters can come in white or natural color, so that's anywhere from black to gray. So Border Lusters in particular are a dual purpose breed which means that they are noted for their meat production as well as wool production. Now, the ewes may look a little rough right now because they've got a lot of wool on them, but it keeps them nice and warm during the winter, and we only shear them twice a year so that we can make things with the long fiber. Okay, our sheep have tags in their ears, and that's for identification purposes. They have to have what we call a scrapies tag. Scrapies is a disease it's a very, it's a degenerative disease that actually leads to certain death. So our flock is certified scrapies free, and we have to have that identification in their ear. And then we also put another tag in their ear that's just one that we use here on the farm to just uh, identify the animals. Um, we didn't talk about what is a, a female sheep called a ewe, a male is a ram, and the babies are called lambs until they're a year old, and then we call them a ewe or ram as well. Okay, so right now we're just giving them little treats, um, just because we love our animals and it's fun to do that. And right now we're just giving them some apple slices. But my children actually show their sheep all over the eastern part of the United States, and we make lots of products with the, um, the sheep and the alpaca fiber that we, we talked about earlier.